Lawrence Swanson. Lauren, we, has. We, we talked about it throughout the course of April and May. What's his motivation? Sure. Right? He's to turn down two monster deals, trying to understand what the future is going to look like in Washington with him being the pillar of that franchise. So you're driving to the yard every day and you start to become selfish. And when you start to become selfish and worried about just your numbers, it has a tendency to tailspin instead of wanting to be one of the band of brothers with the boys and work towards winning games. And you look up at the end of the year and your numbers are there. But he has figured it out. It couldn't last long. I love the fact that he's going to be in the home run derby. So let's dive in. I know Seattle won both games with a doubleheader, but it is a great time to lock in on what Juan Soto's doing as we head into the all-star break. And I know the batting average isn't there this year. Bring up the first board for me, J-Mac. The OPS is still through the roof. So take a look at his splits, Juan Soto. Split since 2020. I mean, situation here, 2020, 2021, he's got a 322 average. And in the first 72 games of this year, he really struggled. 215, an on base of 362. He always finds a way to get on base, even when his batting average is not there. But in the last 15 games, he's now riding a 17 game hitting streak into tonight. He's got a 429, a 607 on base, an 833. So let's get into it, starting with a side angle. Let's take you back to June 24th, okay? Because this is when you know you're coming out of a slump. Bullet the other way against Texas. Staying inside the baseball and nothing has changed. And once you can work it line to line, everything starts to go into place and then you can start getting aggressive like he did against the Braves. 95-1-0 against Charlie Morton, top of the zone. This is the stuff that no one else can do in the game that Juan Soto does repeatedly. Run that back for me. That is a slider from a low three-quarter arm slot from a, a reliever from Seattle standing on the third base side of the rubber that doesn't catch hardly any plate until the last second, and he stays through it, and he is able to drive it up the middle the other way, and then last night, run that back because I love it. He was waiting for that 1-1 cookie. He had been taking everything up the middle the other way the entire series. Luis Terenz tries to go high heater. Paul Seawald, who's been great for the Mariners, gets it to the top of the zone, and it still doesn't matter. Juan Soto absolutely turns this thing around and turns back to him and says, I don't think you can go there. I would love to know what was said in that moment right there. Okay, pause this real quick, because I want to focus on something. Eric Nays, researcher to the stars, we dove in a little bit on what was the struggles early, earlier in the season April and May, and it seemed like it was off speed. Can we bring Jay Mack, the second board up, please? Splits by pitch type, 2021, always hammered the fastball, 359, 675 slug, and then against the breaking ball, I mean 274 with a 470 slug. Look at the first 72 games. He was still slugging the heater, but man, the breaking ball he went silent on for a little bit of time there. 067 batting average, a 117 slug, and in the last 15 games, it started to all come together. A 471 batting average, slug north of a thousand, and now he's hammering the breaking stuff as well. So let's dive in. I like the fact that Davey Martinez talked about the fact, he said maybe trying to do a little bit too much, maybe trying to come off his backside, because when Juan Soto's right, run that back for me. That's a Zach Davies off-speed pitch earlier in the season. You never see him come off this back hip. He almost sets himself down and never gains any ground going forward. You'll see a lot of guys gain ground, come off their backside, and then use their hands. This is a guy that sets the foot down, sets his back hip, and almost waits for the ball to get even with the plate before he just spins and destroys it. You never see him set the foot down and kind of leak forward off of his back hip. And in the beginning of the season, he was doing exactly that. But he has gotten on fire now. Look at him oppo, boom. Mm. And then this is pull. You know what I'm saying, Robert? Run this back for me real quick and go super slow. He's gonna load up, give it to me. 
right there. And then he's staying there. He's sitting and spinning from this spot. Back hip, left butt cheek, just firing at the baseball and destroying it. And also kind of adding on to Juan Soto, I love the fact that he got going <laughs> last year. I would love to know what he said. After the derby, he said it helped his launch angle. After the derby. And Kevin Long, his hitting coach, a left-handed pitcher in the derby, left on left. How many guys would even attempt that? And it got him going. He crushed. He had north of 1,000 OPS in the second half. Mm. He had 18 homers in the second half. So I think the world, listen, we fall in, in and out of love with people way too quick in this game. Ooh. The Nationals took a dive in a rebuild, and we forgot about Juan Soto, but he's on fire lately heading into L.A.